With the Quest 2, the Quest 3, the Pico 4 and the Pimax Crystal I have experienced since the latest DCS 2.9 upgrade quite a nice performance boost. In this video I will guide you again step by step to what I did to achieve really nice results. And I personally strive for the following. First, I want to have clear indicators without having to zoom and I even want to be able to read the cockpit text. Secondly, I want to achieve and maintain a stable maximum FPS of 72 with the 72 Hz settings of most of these VR headsets. Here are my system specs. I run a i9-9900K with a 3080 Ti graphics card and 64GB of RAM. You might think 64GB might be a bit overkill, but having made the upgrade lately from 32 to 64GB gave me a really nice FPS boost and it was not that pricey to upgrade. A quick insight here, when I was playing on a multiplayer server, the Enigma Cold War server on the Syria map, my computer used 34GB of RAM. So 64 might not be so much of an overkill here. Remember, the guide works great for me and you might have to adjust the settings to your own system, whether that is higher or lower. Let's start and we do that by making sure you launch the multi-threading version of DCS. This is very important. You do this by navigating where you installed DCS. Open the DCS World Open Beta folder, open the BinMT folder and here you find the dcs.exe file that will run the OpenXR version. We can also assure it does that by right clicking on the dcs.exe icon and creating a shortcut. Then right click on the dcs.exe shortcut, go to properties and add the following to the target. Dash dash force underscore enable underscore VR and dash dash force underscore open XR. Of course, I will put these commands in the description below. Congrats, the first step is done. Now, if you have an NVIDIA card, please do the following. Open the NVIDIA control panel, go to manage 3D settings and click on program settings and add DCS. Now compared to my latest DCS settings guide, we leave everything by default, but we only change power management mode to prefer maximum performance and I have put virtual reality pre-rendered frames to one. If you have better options that can greatly increase FPS, let, let us know in the comments down below. Now also make sure to download the latest version of the OpenXR toolkit, link is as always in the description below and open it once. Just leave everything default, don't change anything here. So, you are using the Quest 2 or even better, the Quest 3. Follow these exact steps to make sure you will get an incredible FPS boost. First, make sure to download and install Open Composite. When installed, you should see this and you should be able to click on Switch to Open Composite. We do this because we don't want to run DCS through Steam VR. Up next, we open the Oculus app on our computer. Click on Devices and either choose the Quest 2 or the Quest 3 and click on Graphic Preferences. Here I would highly advise to just leave it at 72Hz and you can always, if you like, up this to 90Hz. We also make sure the render resolution is on the default 1x. Also here you can up the settings when you feel like you can. Now last but not least, and this is super important, we have to download the Oculus Tray Tool. When opened, you should see this. Here we want to change some settings to gain a fantastic boost in FPS. We change the FOV multiplier. We set the FOV multiplier to 0.65 or 0.60 and 0.60 or 0.65 on the other side. Now when you connect the headset to the PC and start it up with Earlink or the link cable, you will see some black bars on each side and on the top. If it's too much for you, you can increase the FOV multiplier. 
but do know that this gives a very big FPS boost because it basically doesn't render the image that is outside of your view. So it's just less heavy for your computer. This again is super important and I want you to type in the comments down below that the chicken is not blue but green just so I know that you followed these steps, okay? So the chicken is not blue, but green. The people will get very confused, but okay, we, we'll leave it as this. Okay, so now you are ready to go in game, but I want you to do one more thing once you are in game, and that is to press control, left control F2, that will open the open XR toolkit, and I want you to set turbo mode to on with either the quest two and the quest three. If you notice that with turbo mode on, it starts to stutter heavily, just turn it off. So you are using the Pico 4. Huh, I use it a lot myself as well. I use virtual desktop to stream the game from my PC to the headset. But I have a link cable plugged into my computer for additional charging. If you use the standard software of the Pico 4, the streaming assistant, it will always run it via Steam VR, and we don't want to do that. So, to change this, um, we download and install Open Composite. When installed, you should see this, and you should be able to click on Switch to Open Open Composite. This is normally something we do for the Quest, but we do this for the Pico 4 just to be sure that DCS doesn't run through Steam VR. Up next, you buy and install Virtual Desktop and run it via the Pico 4. When connected to the computer, well, here are my streaming settings. I put streaming quality on medium, and this might sound low, but the indicators and text labels and the buttons are still very clear to read. Also, put the VR frame rate to 72 FPS, 72 Hz. Now, how to open DCS via Virtual Desktop. When you are in the Pico 4 headset and you are connected with Virtual Desktop and so you can see your desktop in the headset, go to the bottom right, click on the up arrow on your desktop, right click on Virtual Desktop icon and click Launch Game. In the next pop-up, you select the DCS.exe. Now, we can finally go in game. So, here are my in-game settings and I use the exact same settings for the Quest 2, Quest 3 and the Pico 4. Let's start with the resolution. I put mine at 1920 by 1080, but I only do this for recording purposes. If you don't mind what is shown on your flat screen, put this as low as possible. The resolution of the cockpit displays. I put mine at 1024 every frame. Now you might be surprised here, but I use the anti-aliasing MSAA and MSAA to four times. Do know that this is an FPS killer, so you might want to lower these settings a bit if you want to gain some FPS. And you might have noticed we don't use any of the upscaling features like DLSS, because that just makes my image a little bit too blurry for my liking, and it's hard to see the text in the cockpit. Sharpening, I do put on 0.5. As for textures, I put this on high and terrain textures on high as well, although I am a little bit in doubt if I should put this back to low because I am not really a ground hugger and I don't mind that the terrain textures look a little bit mwah. Shadows I put high, I like that, although this is another FPS killer. You can see Clearly a big difference if you put it on high here or if we put it to flat only as you can see in this example. So play around with this to your own liking. Flat shadow blurs off, secondary shadows off, triple S off, visible range to medium, civilian traffic off, I don't care, clouds to high, water I have put to low but you can experience with this, experiment with this and set it to medium if you want, SSAO off, SSLR off, lens effects none, heat blur off, motion blur off, depth of field off, clutter or grass, I put that to zero, I don't mind at all, forest visibility to 50%, forest details factor 0 0.30, scenery details factor 0 0.40, preload radius, uh, whatever that, 100,000, yeah, chimney smoke density zero, now the gamma here, that is very personal. Now, uh, the others don't really mind. 
Uh, Anti-Sotropic filtering 16 times, but that's on my system. I can do that. Terrain objects, shadows off, cockpit, global illumination off. I don't really like that, it just distracts me. Uh, and rain droplets, we love rain. It's good, it's nice, we turn that on. And what I have done in the VR settings tab is to make sure to deselect the bloom effect and uncheck enable a HMD mask. The results for the Quest 3 and Quest 2, they are the same. This is a Quest 3 recording flying in the F-16 over the Golan Heights with other F-16s. As you can see, 72 FPS doesn't drop a single frame and look at how sharp this is. I can read the text in the MFDs and the texts in the cockpit and I am so happy. Over here we take a closer look at the left with the Quest 3 especially, everything is Mmm, lovely sharp here as well. And again, I am so happy that I can just fly around in DCS with it just being stable 72 here. Here we are going into a more of a combat area. There's more units, F-16 flying around, ground units over there. When the other F-16 is dropping bombs, the FPS is dropping just a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Ooh, 68. Ooh, 68. But again, 72, it stays for the rest of the flight. Yeah, just fantastic. And I am recording as well, so that normally also dips in a little bit. But apparently it doesn't do anything to the frames. Super happy with this. I might even start streaming now again. But we are not done yet. A multiplayer server. The Growling Sidewinder server. Full. Well, there's no one next to me, but okay. 72 FPS doesn't drop a single frame and we are on the ground we are on the ground i am recording oh a little dip there ah, this is all you want this is all you want in a multiplayer server clear indicators clear text not having to worry about any micro stutters or whatever it just works and it works fantastic here we are taking off and i can tell you that in disguise it is even better. It just really never dips in my uh, in my computer. Here we are taking off and uh, yeah, super happy with the results guys. Uh, please share your results as well. Let's help each other. Okay, sorry, we are not done yet. I am a bit flabbergasted. I put the render resolution in the Oculus app to 1.5 and holy moly, you should see what I see right now in my uh, Quest 3 headset. This is sharp. It has a little bit more drops in frames, but still, a stable 72 FPS, I would say. And yeah, this is... I can read everything. I can read everything. I'm flabbergasted myself a little bit. If you can, if you have the space to do it, try a little bit to tweak with these uh, settings in the Oculus app. Uh, get some extra resolution in and see if you can make it because it really pays off in clarity. And here are the Pico 4 results. And it does have a little bit of a problem when I record in OBS. Uh, it has some frame drops here, but if I don't record, it is at a stable 72 FPS. Again, in the Pico 4, it's quite clear. It is sharp with the, with the settings I showed you. You can read the uh, text in the MFDs and the text in the, uh, in the cockpit as well. Unfortunately, the Pico 4 doesn't have something like the Oculus Tray tool, so we can't narrow the image down to uh, only render what we see like the Quest 3 or the Quest 2. So we can't get that FPS, FPS boost, but hey, I am super happy with these results as well. For the Pico 4, it's, it's super sharp. And uh, yeah, I mean, we are pretty much at a stable 72 here, especially with uh, when I'm not recording. Again, here a little bit the uh, cockpit. And here we are in multiplayer, the Growling Sidewinder server, a full server. Kind of 72 FPS. We are on the ground. We are on the ground. There are other planes around us. I am surprised we can uh, maintain 72 FPS with the DCS 2.8 version. I was not being able to do this on the ground when recording. So I am super happy with this. We can see some dips here occasionally. But holy moly, like the Quest 2, like the Quest 3, I am flabbergasted that we can do this. And here we are in the air, uh, well, as you can see, 72 FPS, trying to do a little bit of a formation flying in the multiplayer server. Just super happy that when getting close to a uh, friendly plane, we can just maintain that 72 FPS. Okay, now let's take a look at the Pimax Crystal and, ah oh man, in love with the headset as it is just so sharp. We have the OpenXR toolkit already, but we also need the Pimax control center, as I like to call it. Link is like all the other tools in the description below. The Pimax Crystal has eye tracking, and so it does have foveated rendering. 
we of course want to make use of this feature as it will give us a nice performance boost. So we also install QuadFuse Foveated, link is in the description. And last but not least, to make it easy to play with the settings, we download QuadFuse Companion App. We make sure that in the Pimax XR Control Center, we check Allow to use the eye tracker and enable Quad Fuse rendering. For the Quad View Companion app, these are my settings. Pause them and take them over as you wish. Now, for the Pimax device settings, I am in the beta, so I can set my Pimax crystal to 72 Hz. And let's hope they will roll out this feature as soon as possible to everyone. Here, I also have eye tracking enabled. In the game step, I have the render quality to maximum as well as the dynamic foveated rendering. Make sure you have unchecked smart smoothing. And that's it. We can now start the game. And as the Pimax Crystal offers such a sharp resolution, I had to downgrade the settings a bit. So here are my in-game settings for the Pimax Crystal. And what I have done in the VR settings tab is to make sure to deselect the bloom effect and uncheck enable a HMD mask, as this can conflict with the eye tracking feature. Once you are in game, I want you to do one more thing and that is to press left control F2 to open the OpenXR toolkit and then set turbo mode to on. If you notice that with turbo mode on, the game stutters very heavily, just turn it off. And here are the results for the Pimax Crystal and you might think, damn, that looks all very blurry. That's correct, because of the foveated rendering, it only makes the picture sharp to wherever I am looking. And it makes that very sharp. Compared to the other headsets, this is the clearest image you can get. Unfortunately, OBS, the recording software that I use, is conflicting heavily with DCS. So I lose about 7 to 10 FPS when I am recording, so you can add that up. But I can tell you one thing, if you have a high-end PC, and I am talking a 4090 graphics card, and you play only seated simulation games, and you want to bring VR to the next level, the Pimax Crystal is the way to go. And here we are in a full multiplayer server. Again, the FPS drops because I am recording. Uh, so at 10 more FPS, between 7 or 10 more FPS, and I am super happy with this. Again, it might look blurry to you, but trust me, wherever I am looking, it is absolutely crystal sharp. Here in the air, if I stop the recording, again, I am repetitive, I know, but then it gets to 72 FPS and it stays there. So super happy with these results as well. And so, I really hope that this guide helps you in playing DCS in VR with maximum performance. And let us know what it did for you. Post your system rigs in the comments down below with the performance results. And let's learn from each other so we can maybe help each other out with getting the best settings for VR. Thank you for watching this guide. A simple like to this video is enough to support me. And as always, I hope to see you in the next video. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to keep up to date with the latest VR stuff. Ciao, ciao.